Hey man, brethren, a few things. I'm just going to be kind of ch chatting about a few different topics, really. Um, but mostly this one, I recorded it earlier when I was on the phone. Um, I have this like every night revival meeting with my wife. We try to anyway. It's amazing how like stuff, how much stuff can complicate something so simple, but it's really hard. We have like a little miniature church service over the phone every day. <laughs> but I thought about this thing one time and I was actually driving, so I didn't think it came out very well. So anyways, I'm going to tell it to you again. And this is in regards to the laws of God. A lot of people um, who are very uh, Baptist and very um, annoying or very, very whatever, they have this view of like, well, um, which of the 613 laws are we supposed to obey, Brother Robbie? And used to answer like saying, well, you know, among the Israelites, there was a lot of those laws that you'd see that was for the, it was exclusively for the Levites or the part of the Levites that were actually into the priesthood. And they had a lot of specific rules because they had to go closer into the presence of God. And also there was a lot of specific laws because the proximity of the Holy Spirit was was miraculously close. And in that, the laws were heightened and the judgment was stricter, much more strict. Um, and people would die from, you know, messing up and God sometimes would kill them himself if they did something wrong. And it uh, goes even into all those different laws that you see, like suffer not a witch to live and such like that. How do you answer that, man? There's... I was like, yeah, there's a lot of hard questions and such in the Bible, but those ones is like a, in regards to, um, those are just like an addition to the Ten Commandments, you know, Ten Commandments, God spoke, and then God, and then all the people said, don't let him say anymore, and so Moses continued with all the laws, it was, you know, kind of a sum up, and so the Ten does have its specific place, yes, but the law, God, the law continued, Moses continued to prophesy exactly what God would have said anyway. And there was another three chapters of laws, and then there and there was seven more laws among God's people, while his presence was exceedingly close, that if you did certain things wrong, you'd be killed for it. Either God would kill you, or they would have to kill you under God's command. And that's just what happens when you get that close to the one who made the heavens and the earth. The rules change immensely, and the standards change immensely, because now you really, really know just like all the angels who knew, now there's no chance of redemption for them because they really, really knew, and there's no excuse for them to make these criminal activities. So, anyways, um, that's the, those the different places in the laws. There's different reasons why laws are activated and not activated, and uh, the delay on judgment and such like that. Like when the Philistines took out Eli's sons, is because the judgment for them was delayed because the presence of God wasn't miraculously close at the time. It was a little bit close, obviously, because Eli prophesied and all that a little bit for, you know, the Samuel boy ch child coming along and everything. And then eventually Samuel the boy child, the prophet, decided to, uh, or God decided to prophesy through him the judgment of Eli, the house of Eli coming down. So there's a lot of different things we see in scripture for laws pertaining and when they don't pertain. But let's get into this other thought here that helps us understand um, how can we be living by the law and the commands of God and the testimonies of God and the precepts of God? How can we live by that and not be legalistic? You know, because the Lord shows that people who and don't do and don't go to Him is because of whether they did or they didn't obey the Holy Spirit, the commands of God. They depart from it, you curse it in everlasting fire. Lawless, you have no law. Why well, thought the law? I thought we weren't under the law, Jesus. If you keep me, if you love me, keep my commandments. I thought we weren't under the law, Lord. Come on. This is eternal life that you keep my commandments. This is eternal life that you may know him. Knowing him, going to heaven, and commandments being held to. All these things are like broken records saying the exact same thing. You will come to keep the commandments. Who shall ascend that hill? In Psalms 24, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted up his soul to an idol. Um, who hath not sworn deceitfully. Ezekiel 18, where it shows you all the things that you will do and won't do. I mean, it's a broken record throughout the Old and New Testament uh, that you will keep the commands if you plan on making heaven your home. But I thought we weren't under the law, you know. <laughs> well, truthfully, no one has ever been under the law. Salvation has always been by grace. It, it, salvation has always been by mercy. People struggle with legalism in the Old Testament. People struggle with the legalism in the New Testament. People struggle with legalism in the early church, and they struggle with it now. Legalism is just... Um, when you emphasize the law more than you emphasize the Holy Spirit. Because there's no way, the whole point of this video is to say that there's no way you mentally could know all of the laws of God. It's impossible. 
and it reminds me of a lady I picked up, but I, I've been doing Lyft driving off and on. Lately, I've been on because it's been so busy, and I've been making a lot of extra money. You know, so I'm honestly making more money than my new job, which pays more than I've ever made in any of my jobs before. So right now is a, is a good bumper crop of finance for me. That's why I'm focusing on that so much, because I want to buy a house, because <laughs> I don't want to be under anybody's control anymore. But anyways, um, <clears throat> this lady um, was an was a, um, attorney. I picked up a few attorneys so far, and they, a lot of them all say the same thing, because I've heard about attorney life before and how there's a lot of death threats and all this stuff, and it's very can be very scary thinking that there's people that you've dealt with that want to kill you now. So I asked the lady about three years ago, I said, is your job scary? She said, no. I said, how come? And she says, because I'm only working in family law. And I said, oh, there's a difference. And she says, oh yeah, there's different kinds of attorneys because they deal with different types of laws and such. And I said, oh, okay. And she says, well, there's no way that anybody could know all the laws. There's just too much to know. That's why you have to have, have an attorney who specializes in, um, like I, I dealt with a guy who was dealing with um, copyright law. Um, she does, I've heard about people doing criminal law, people who do family law from that lady, and then another dude who did like, uh, I don't know, something really boring like taxes. He said, oh, my, my, my attorney life is very, very boring. And I just started laughing and got him laughing and it was really great and then he tipped me great. <laughs> but uh, it's just realizing there's so much to the laws of, the, of America or wherever we go. And in, in, in government, there's so many laws there's no way you could know it. That's why you have to have an attorney. But now we have an attorney in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He leads you to be obedient to the laws and commands of God without even having known them. He shall teach you all things, the Bible says. That's what he means. It's like he's going to show you his commands, and you can follow his commands just by following his voice, because his voice and his commands are in unison. They're absolutely perfectly in unison. You are a command obeying person when you follow the Holy Spirit like a child. You just come as a child, present your bodies, present yourself to the Lord as a vessel of Lord. I want to live to glorify you. My life is a repentant life. What does that mean? My life repented from living what I think versus now I want to live for what he thinks. And that's why I'm going to seek him. And so I can stop thinking like I think and start to think like Christ wants me to think and put the mind of Christ on me, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I want to live with this mindset and find out what kind of peace I can find when I travel the old path and find rest for my soul. So I think that there's too much in the law in the natural to know everything, so you have to find someone who specializes in it. And there's too much of the laws of the spirit to know it all, and you can find a know-it-all, and that could be a very bad thing in the natural. You don't want to be around some spiritual know-it-all who gives you all this advice and stuff like that. You can take it for what you can, but then ultimately make your decisions according to the Holy Spirit. And the clear teachings of Scripture, if it is crystal clear. But uh, there's too much to know. So that's why we need the Holy Spirit to be our attorney in that. Because he specializes in all of the law. He might, he might be having family issues. He might be having legal issues. He might be having criminal issues. He might be having health issues. And he knows the laws of everything on every note and period. And he knows where you belong on that thing. And sometimes he's like, you know, I would like to, but first got to test you. Because the more, I, uh, the more miracles I do in your life, the more prideful you're going to get. I got to make sure you're going to be humble after I do these miracles. God says, I don't mind. I don't have a problem doing miracles. I just have a problem keeping my people humble after the miracles happen because now they think they're, they think they're spiritually above everybody else. He's like, no, I'm above everybody else. I am the Lord and there is none beside. That's what he says. So, amen. Lost to all that stuff. The other things I'll get into another time. I'd like to invite um, men. Amen. I'd like to invite men to uh, Marco Polo. I've been accused of trying to use YouTube as a dating thing. I have never used YouTube as a dating thing. And almost, I think only two times has anybody ever used it to try to uh, get my attention from the opposite side of the gender spectrum. And I, uh, I could sense their dominantness. It's like some type of a narcissist or something trying to pursue me and try to trap me or something. And I could sense it really easily. And so I just kind of shut it down. Just let them know I, I won't be talking to any females privately on the phone. That's not going to happen. And that was a long time ago. And now it's even, um, I mean, of course, I'm not going to be doing that anyway. Um, so anyways, um, I have. I have talked to sisters <clears throat> since then. 
but that's not something that I, I believe in unless it's something that is kind of obvious. You know, in the house church, there was a few ladies that everybody, we all knew each other, and it was very, very good. It was very obviously fine. <clears throat> but as for me now, men, i um, like to invite you to Marco Polo app. If you are, if you believe in free will, you believe in holy living, and you believe that life is challenging, <laughs> the earthly world is challenging, and the spiritual world is challenging. If you believe these things, you'll fit right in. We got some new guys in there. One guy kind of tapped out for a little while, and I can't wait for him to get back in there because he talked a lot, and he's he's kind of a new guy. He's getting back on track, and he's reading a lot of the scripture, and he's always asking all these questions, and he's like, "What is all this? What is all this?" And here we start just jumping in there, and we all kind of rally around that. And, and right now he's laying low, doing something else for the time being. It's fine. And now we are all, um, we can get things going on different notes. And it's, there's a lot of different views in there, but we don't argue in there. It's not about an arguing group. This is not an argue group. It's a men's group to recognize all the different strengths of the body of Christ and listen to as many men in there talking as you want to. There's about 16 men now, um, 17, 16, 17, whatever. And from India, Africa, United States, and Canada. And uh, we talk, sometimes it's booming, and you could never keep up if you tried. <laughs> and sometimes it's so slow that you can't wait for someone to come in there and say something strange or say something interesting or profound, whatever, and get the ball rolling again. But we're all living our lives. It's nice. You can drop a message in there anytime, and you can turn the camera over if you don't feel like being on camera. You can just type in there, whatever. You can post videos in there. You can put links in there, whatever, whatever. It's really, really fun. I've been using it for a lot of years, and this is definitely the best group I've ever had. And it's a lot more, it's more like people gathering as leaders. Men who are leaders of their home, priests of their home, priests of their own jobs, priests of their own ministries, whatever. And then they get in there and we just talk among each other about lots of different stuff. We talk about, you know, Christian stuff, you know, biblical stuff, conspiracy stuff, end time stuff, praying in there, music, whatever. So, been great and uh, love to have uh, the men who are interested in te teaming up in there. You can learn a lot in there. It's just not for women. So if you're a woman and you need fellowship, then, um, yeah, I don't know where that's at. I mean, I know there's a few guys in the group that is actually married, and uh, then then you could pass your info to them and uh, pass it over to their wives. Um, that might work. <laughs> I know a few sisters. I met a really nice sister. I gave her my, my wife's number so she can contact my wife now because I thought she was spectacular. I met her in Washington, D.C. just a couple days ago. And I met another dude from D.C. all the way to Portland. He actually happens to work really... Uh, he lives close to where I work. I, I work about an hour from my job on the west side of town. More west than the west side holiness was even. But uh, anyways, um, amen, everybody. Hope you like the word and I look, look forward to hearing from you. If you are a man and you'd like to join Marco Polo, then what I'm going to ask you to do is just download it onto your iPad or your iPhone or your Android, whatever device. And when you have it on there, that's awesome. Then openly put your phone number on there because um, I'm going to have everything has to be in the open. I don't want any um, private stuff going on. Um, I'm sure you don't want your phone number on there, but I can't put my number on there anymore. So put your cell phone number on there. You know, give me a, have a little conversation on the open, and then as soon as we do that, then we'll I'll delete it all as soon as I got your number, and then I'll just add you to the group um, on Marco Polo. But yeah, it's it's nice to just get on there, get get on, sign up with Marco Polo, and then send me your cell phone number that you that you've used, and then I'll add you to the um, men's group, and then from there you can talk to the men privately if you want and whatever. It's just kind of a it's kind of a chat room, but it is it's very it can be serious if we need it to be. And it's awesome. So anyways, have a great day, everybody. God bless. Have a great week in Jesus. And keep on winning the fights. Amen.